Hey guys, I just wanted to come on here and give a quick 10 minute or less video on some of the cool features of Xtool Creative Space that might not be known by everybody. This is not really a beginner video. This would be more for the intermediate or advanced Xtool Creative Space users. So I hope you find some new stuff on this video that can help improve your laser engraving. As always, I'm going to start with a blank untitled document on Xtool Creative Space. One thing you can do if you're processing a project is come up here to the top right corner that looks like three sheets of paper. Click on it and then it'll show you what task is in progress. But you can also come up to the history tab, click on it, and then here's some of your previous engraved projects. So let's say for instance I want to look up the penguin earrings that I created. So I can find it, I engraved them on December 7th. I can click this View Files button and it will bring up the files that I engraved. So here are the two penguins. Going back to a blank document, I have added this image of a deer. So this is an outline that I added as a JPEG. I don't want it to engrave the outside of this rectangle, so I want to remove that. I can click on it, hit the Edit button, and click on all the white space and remove it. And click Save. So if I engrave it right now, all it's going to engrave is the outline of the deer. So here's a new feature on Xtool Creative Space. Go to the Applications tab and find the Measurement button. Using this application, I can click two points and measure the distance between them. So I click here to measure. And let's say that I want to know the length of the deer. I can see that between the nose and the tail of the deer is 2.92 inches. But that's kind of an easy given when you look at the width and the height on the home screen. So let's find something that's not. Maybe I want to find the diagonal distance of the deer from the top left point to the bottom right point. So I just click and click the other point and I see that it's a length of 4.21 inches. This is a great way to ensure that your engraving doesn't go off the material that you're trying to engrave on, and is a great new feature by Xtool Creative Space. Also here on the Applications tab, we can do a Material Test Array. This is something that's pretty important to make sure that your engraving is the right speed and power for the piece of material that you have. So I need to select my object, click the Material Test Array, and as you can see, it's created a bunch of different images of the deer. So click Done. Now let's make it a little bit smaller so we can see it. So what this will do is engrave the deer at different speeds, at millimeters per second, and different power percentages to see which one looks perfect on your piece of material. It'll start with very low power and low speed and go up to high speed and higher power. So this one on the bottom right corner will have the lowest speed and the highest power, so it will be your darkest engraving. So this may not be used very much, but let's say that you have a bunch of different engravings you're going to have to use on the same material in the future. You can find out the exact engraving speed and power that you need for that type of material. But let's say you don't want to go through all that work. You can delete this and then come up here to the unknown material button. You can try to find the material that you're looking to use. So let's say you're trying to engrave on some cherry plywood. I can click it and confirm, and it will give me the recommended speed and power to engrave on this cherry plywood. Maybe your piece of material is thicker than three millimeters. So you can click on it, search more Xtool materials, and then type it in. So here's my six millimeter cherry plywood. I can scroll down and you see I'm on the D1 Pro 10 watt, that's the engraver that I currently have, and maybe I'm wanting to cut this material. So it gives me nine different options here from 80% power all the way up to 100% power and two millimeters per second up to six millimeters per second. So if I'm wanting to cut through this material, I'll definitely have to use one of these bottom three recommended speed and power. 
Now I know what speed and power I need to cut through 6 millimeter cherry plywood. Again, it still may take some practice to ensure that you have your speed and power exactly right, but this is a good base to go off of. I need 90% power, 2 millimeters per second, and 2 passes. So this image here, if I try to process it on my engraver, it's going to engrave this image by going back and forth and engraving each line of the deer. So that brings up the question, how would I cut out this deer or score it? So the easiest way I've found to do this is to select the deer, trace around the deer, and it'll bring that up using a vector trace. Click Save. So now you'll have two different deers. Here's my original, and then here is the outline. This is what's been traced. So now you see I can score, engrave, or cut this deer versus the original, which is still considered a raster image, even though I removed the background. So this one is a vector, and then this one is a raster. So this would be the image that I would want to cut out. I can also add other things to this engraving to make it look cool, such as adding a tree behind the deer. So I can take this tree and using the auto snapping feature, so see how it snaps to the middle of the page or to the bottom of the deer using this blue line. I can put the image of the tree near the deer and auto snap it where they both look like they're on the ground. I can make it bigger. I can put the deer in front of the tree with two different options. One selecting the deer, right clicking, and then hitting the arrange tab and bringing forward. Or I can come up here to the top under the arrange tab and bring forward. So if I want to score this tree, now I have a cool image of a tree with a deer in front of it. The last neat little trick that I'll show has something to do with text. So I've added this text deer. I added it by typing it on Canva, importing it as a JPEG file onto my blank page, and then I remove the background. So I can engrave this, but if I want to put a background on it, I can click it, come to this button that says offset, and see it creates an offset around the outside of the wording. I can change the size of this offset. So this would just cut right around the wording and each letter would be individual. Or I can go back to the default of 0 0.079. So I could cut around this if I wanted to at 100% power, whatever the recommended speed would be. So we'll say six millimeters per second and two passes. Once I do that, it will cut around this outside of the wording and then engrave the inside. So that's just one cool way to add some dynamics with cutting as well as engraving. There's a bunch of other cool options that you can do on Xtool Creative Space, but it really just takes some playing around with it and some time you're definitely gonna make some mistakes along the way, so go ahead and try to make them early and practice as much as possible. That way that if you are engraving to try to make a profit and you get a big order from a client, you can get it done with ease and have it to them quickly. So that's just a couple quick tricks and tips for an advanced engraver. I hope you found some benefit from this video. If you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments and I'll try to answer them as quick as possible. Please like and subscribe this video so I can continue to make some more great content, and I hope everyone has a great one.